It's a great pleasure to announce the winner of, of this year's Poetry Prize, uh, Helen Woods for Migration. Migration is a flock of birds who leave the last shrill calls of summer, leave the trees and nests that cut them like a hand while they waited for their hearts to grow big enough to fit the whole world in. Their wings sing of a bright new future. They pass the sound of the sky, feather to feather, beak to beak. But wherever they land, far away, in the winter that glows gold, somewhere, back there, the prints their tiny feet left behind are still etched. They are waiting for the ghost of a bird to brush the ground. The poems or poetry is movement. When we were there, we knew it was the place without a door. This event is really coming at the end of our decade of migration conference. We celebrated 10 years of Compass, and in particular, it's uh, a celebration of our poetry competition. This poem is about that being in two places at once. Field notes for an Icelandic glacier. Smooth and blue and creased like an unironed shirt. It is for a split second warming and now freezing, needles in the palm, cold. I pass through a vault in the Asia ice into a courtyard of light and look up to see two shards, almost but not quite touching. They are meeting, yet they are also parting. By the same degree, I am here in Iceland watching a glacier melt in Kapla's molten glare and in my imagination there in Kew Gardens where Henry Moore's bronze oval with two points holds the light in tension. Which is to say, I am here. It was really motivated in some ways by the same reasoning behind our photograph competition. So the photograph competition was developed because we were very conscious of the difficulties of illustrating migration and the ways that images around the migrant and migration are quite often very politically fraught. And so now we've got a fantastic bank of images that we can use to illustrate all our materials and we really do make very good use of, um, of the photographs. Migration is um, it's very easy and in fact in public debate it often gets reduced to just basically numbers and statistics and how many people are migrants and you know what's a good number and what's a bad number. Um, but also to you know interviews um, and uh, extracting um, data from people, asking them questions and so on. And we wanted to recognise that actually, you know, of course migration is a simple human experience, which has got all sorts of very simple on the one hand, highly complicated on the other, which has got all sorts, infused with all sorts of emotions. So we thought that actually inviting poems and help, um, having a poetry competition would be a good way to try and capture some of this. So we um, organised two competitions, one for adults and one for young people aged 12 to 17. At sundown, in my country, I find the gentle grass touching my feet, lying under the cherry tree with flowers white and sweet. I watched the red blade of the sun going down, and as the shadows grow, so grew the quiet. In my other country, I have grown used to the rumbling sounds of cars. At night, from my window, I watch the stars. My clock ticks, tick tock, pushing forward time. I think of the red blade of the sun going down. Most good poems are adventures, journeys that do not follow a straight line or go where you expect. Poems are small-scale adventures of thought and sound well suited to reflecting our lives as a journey. I don't remember. I don't remember the place where the only colour I saw was green, where the blazing heat would challenge me, not even the tall twisty trees which they tell me I used to climb. I have forgotten the mangy dogs I used to bark at, 
and the snakes I waited to pelt rocks at, the fish I caught by hand, even the dragonflies I tracked. Also the taste of the just right mangoes which I would climb the trees to pick, and the giant fish which would not fit in the kitchen, and the chickens which would be slaughtered in front of me, and the birds slingshotted out of the sky that would all end up in a pot filled with spices which would soon be empty unless I got there first. No, I don't remember the taste of dried dates or the mangoes, the peaches, the jackfruits, the pineapples, the juiciness of it all. I don't remember the smells, the market filled with men just waiting for a customer, the cut grass being stored for the livestock. I don't remember the view from those huge hills which are so hard to climb, or the eagles soaring high in the sky, waiting to pull something out of the green, the cows grazing on the grass all year, continuously munching, munching away, not even the painted fences standing in their new rows. No, I don't remember the day my life was taken away. I don't remember the fearless boy I used to be. I don't remember my country, Bangladesh. My children's mothers. We three have never met, but there is always a place set for you at my feast days. One day you will arrive, weary after long years of travel, through the kind of hardship that begins deceitfully small. We will sit together and tell our stories of a land struck dead by a curse, by a baby, of an ache for something so missing that the sun turned its face to the wall and earth turned to winter. When it is time for your leaving, I will lend you a child to light your journey home, a son to defend you from the forest phantoms, a daughter with her dragon-soothing kisses. Landing. Before they emerged from the capsule, they never expected bird song or the sound of the ocean crashing upon the shore. The jerk of recognition it induced in the pit of their space suits. So many harmonies caught in each other across the coldest of stratospheres. And even if it later proved a simulation designed to reduce cortisol in the bloodstream of long haul voyages, no one could explain the salt on their lips, soft specks of sand on their lashes. <laughs> 